Well, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, thank you so much for your time. It's good to see you again. Thank you. I'm glad we're doing this because I think this is a very important conversation yeah. for Latino voters. Yes. Um, more than 36 million are eligible to vote. Mm -hmm. You've been talking to many of them recently. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how you feel about them. Uh, what comes to your mind? How do you prepare when you prepare a policy that the one you're announcing today, when you meet them? What comes to your mind when you think about Latinos in the United States? A lot. Um, I'll start with the fact that on so many of the biggest issues, we all have m so much more in common than what separates us. Latinos, like everyone, care about bringing down cost of groceries, the everyday cost of life. Um, I think of the Latino community in terms of the extraordinary ambition the aspirations, the dreams that exist in the community, understanding it is not a monolith, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that not unlike any other community, there are dreams and hopes, but not necessarily always access to opportunity. And a lot of my agenda is about creating opportunity for people to, to succeed. So, for example, part of the agenda that I've rolled out that I, I am very aware how it would affect Latino men, for example, includes what we need to do around building a strong economy that supports working people. Mm -hmm. Understanding that, for example, small business people, small business owners don't always have access to the capital they need to grow their business or even for people to start a small business. And I know that Latino men um, often have a more difficult time having access to the big loans from the big banks because of um, relationships because of things that are not necessarily grounded in their their qualification. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I am focused on what we can do to bring more capital to community banks that will understand the community and being able to give um, those kinds of loans. My focus is on small businesses, understanding that right now the tax deduction for a small business is five thousand dollars. For a, a, nobody can start a small business on five thousand dollars. So I'm going to grow it so that it's fifty thousand dollars tax deduction to start up a small business. Home ownership. Latinos, only half of Latino households are homeowners, right? So part of my plan is to do what we can to give people the opportunity for home ownership, which is about building intergenerational wealth. So my plan includes a $25,000 down payment assistance for first time home buyers so they can get their foot in the door to home ownership. So my agenda around an, an opportunity economy will benefit all Americans, but I am also aware of the specific impact on the Latino community. Yes. Now, Paul suggests that you're having shortcomings with Latinos, specifically with Latino men. Mm. Why do you think that President Donald Trump has been able to, to make those gains with Latinos? Listen, Donald Trump has, when he was president, had policies that I think have um, been very harmful to working people. You know, he gave tax cuts to billionaires and the biggest corporations. He will do that again. Um, without, but, why, but why is he winning with Latino voters? Not I winning, not winning, but, you know, winning more voters. But this is not my experience. Mm -hmm. My experience is I talk with Latino voters every day all the time. And there is an incredible amount of support there. Because Latino voters understand that they want a president of the United States who treats all people with dignity, with respect, and invests in their, yeah. their dreams for themselves and their family. Donald Trump, what did we get from him as president? Family separation policies, d deriding and, and speaking ill of people of certain backgrounds. Um, we look at what he intends to do with Project 2025. I urge your viewers to Google Project yes. 2025. He would cap the cost of in We have capped the cost of insulin at $35 a month for seniors. Latinos are 70% more likely to be diagnosed yes, with yes. diabetes. He would get rid of our cap. And he said that uh, immigrants are the enemies. and that, 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 um, It's terrible. Poisoning the blood of the country, mm -hmm. that they eat pets, that they, that's an invasion going on. But still, 40% of Latinos support President Trump. So is that, let's say, is that to his credit, his ability to win votes, or is that more about Democrats failing to connect with Latinos? We are two weeks away from the election. My job is to earn the vote of every voter. And 
I am working to do just that by mm -hmm. explaining where I come from and how I intend to lead. I come from a hardworking background. My mother arrived in the United States when she was 19 by herself. And I now sit here one generation later as vice president of the United States. Yes. I understand hardworking people. I understand the dreams people have for themselves and their children. I understand the optimism and the faith that people have in a brighter future and are willing to work hard for that. I believe that Donald Trump does not see the, the optimism and the, the capacity and potential of the people in a way that will invest in them and allow them to have the opportunities to pursue their goals and their dreams. And I think that's the big difference. And the words that you rightly refer to that he has used to refer to the immigrant community, I think tells us how he thinks about this community. But also you just have to look at the policies that he had and the policies he is pushing. My job and the job of the media is to make sure that all people have facts yeah. and have the right information. And then, of course, no. they will make a decision. So of course, your economic policies are very important to a lot of Latino voters mm -hmm. who really worry about bringing food to the table. But other voters, Latino voters, come from countries like Cuba, yeah. Venezuela, Nicaragua. Yeah. They escape their countries due to socialism. Yeah. And dictatorship. And as you know, President Donald Trump has defined you as an extreme socialist that will destroy this country. So where do you stand? How do you define yourself as a progressive, as a socialist, as a moderate? How do you define yourself to these voters? I am a capitalist. I am a pragmatic capitalist. I believe that we need a new generation of leadership in America that actively works with the private sector to build up the new industries of America, to build up small business owners, to allow us to increase home ownership, to allow people and their families to build intergenerational wealth. I believe in supporting workers. I also believe in, in what we need to do as a new approach that understands, for example, that some of the best jobs that we have available don't necessarily require a college degree. So as vice president, part of my plan includes understanding that skills and experience should be as important as a college degree in determining who is a qualified worker to take on a job. And so let me tell you. So, for example, my approach is to say that we should examine the, the, the jobs within the federal government to reassess which ones don't require a college degree. And then I will challenge the private sector to do the same. I am a capitalist who believes not everyone starts out on the same base, but that everyone has the drive, the grit, the work ethic to succeed, and we have to create an economy that gives people an opportunity. Mm -hmm. I will you don't tell like you, the progressive of moderate uh, terms to, to define yourself? I believe in the freedom of people to make decisions about their own bodies and women mm -hmm. to make decisions about their own bodies and not have their government tell them what to do. I believe that we must stand strong as the United States of America, support our military, and unlike Donald Trump, should not be referring to service members as suckers and losers. I believe that the United States of America must have a president who does not admire dictators. Donald Trump said he would be a dictator on day one. I believe the United States of America deserves a president of the United States who upholds their oath to protect the Constitution of the United States. Donald Trump said he would terminate the Constitution of the United States. Now, on the first trip you did as a, the Democratic nominee to Arizona, you said you will be tough on immigration. How does that look like? Well, I have personally prosecuted transnational criminal organizations who have trafficked in guns, drugs, and human beings. I have prosecuted the Sinaloa cartel, the Guadalajara cartel. Mm -hmm. I understand, based on work I have done for years, the importance of having a secure border. And the work that I will do as president of the United States is to always ensure that we have a secure border and that we have a humane and orderly immigration system. America's immigration system has been broke for, broken for a long time, and it can be fixed. There was a bill in the United States Congress that could have done yes. part of that work. Donald Trump killed the bill because he'd prefer to run on the problem 
instead of fixing the problem. <laughs> I pledge to be a president who will fix the problem, understanding it's a false choice to suggest we either have a secure border or we have a comprehensive immigration system. We can have both. We must have both. But, I mean, this bill, it includes um, stricter asylum requirements, more uh, resources for border security, even shutting down the border. All of those are policies that President Donald Trump used during his presidency. So on immigration, has Donald Trump won the argument? Absolutely not. He has no, he literally stood in the way of what was at hand, a bipartisan bill, including some of the most conservative members of the United States mm -hmm. Congress, that would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border to help those border agents who are working around the clock. It would have allowed us to have the resources to stem the flow of fentanyl, which is killing people in America. And he stood in the way of that progress. So, you know, he talks a big talk. But when it comes to actually putting in place solutions, he falls quite short. Mm. And I think it's very important that we remember also what he did on immigration. Child separation policies. Yes. Policies that were about vilifying people. Separating children from their mothers. I hear you. But I think my question is, Right now, we're talking about border security, and there's nobody, no Democrat, talking about a pathway to citizenship, uh, an immigration relief, am, and, and the, the benefits that migrants bring to this country. Oh, but there is no question that migrants bring... America is a country that is, it was built in part by immigrants who have But people are concerned about their TPS, their DACA, their... And we're talking about uh, mass deportations. I'm not talking about. What do you stand on mass deportations? You, what's what's your stand there? This, we need smart, humane immigration policy in America mm -hmm. that includes a pathway to citizenship, putting more resources at the border in terms of security, honoring America's history as a country of immigrants not vilifying people who are fleeing harm, but instead creating an orderly system for them to actually be able to make their case. That's where I stand. I stand on the principle that we should not be talking about immigrants. It's, it's poisoning the blood of America. How can... Uh, you might not win Congress. So how can you make sure you pass an immigration reform, a pathway to citizenship? Because Latinos have heard a lot about this for decades now. And it feels like an unfulfilled promise. Well, there has been bipartisan support in the past. And I think this election and how Latinos vote can help pave the pathway for the solutions. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump is not going to push for a pathway for citizenship. He did not in the past. He will not in the future. We know Donald Trump and how he talks about immigration. Yeah. And so... Let, I, I, I cannot emphasize more strongly, the Latino vote in this election is very important. And I know well enough that the people that we are talking about believe in our country, love our country, are dedicated to its growth, its prosperity, and the opportunity that everyone should have to dignity and the ability to be treated with respect. Yeah. And that is not Donald Trump's future. Donald Trump is trying to take us backward. He is not trying to take us forward. And the Latino vote, when people look at the issues, whether it be who has a plan for working people in America, who has a plan for the children of America, part of my plan includes expanding the child tax credit so young families get $6,000 during the first year of their child's yes. life. This, these are the issues that I would ask Everyone watching this to take a look at who actually has a plan. Go to KamalaHarris.com and you will see 80 pages of my plan that is mostly focused on middle class working people, small businesses, families, and uplifting the people. Yeah. Donald Trump there, is a lot of rhetoric. There are some uh, um, foreign policy questions I have for you that sure. Latino voters care about. Okay. So Venezuela, mm -hmm. President Maduro uh, lost an election yeah. in the summer. Yes, he did. Um, do you have a specific strategy in mind in case he doesn't leave office? Maybe use the military, uh, military force, because sanctions haven't worked. So what do you have in mind if he we're doesn't not, leave well, office? We're not going to use the U.S. military mm -hmm. there. But let me be very clear also. Um, 
the, the we must stand firm as the United States of America and respect the will of the people in that election. And I've been very clear about that as it relates to, to the election that occurred in Venezuela. The will of the people must be respected. And this is why we've also issued sanctions. Yeah. Mexico yes. just elected a mm -hmm. female president, mm -hmm. the first female president. You have? Yes, yeah. Okay, you might become the first uh, president of the United States. So, um, What's your message to her? What did you tell her when you call her? I congratulated her, and um, and I look forward to working with her. You know, when I was, I've I've done a lot of work with the Mexican government over the years. When I was Attorney General of yes. California, I led a bipartisan group of attorneys general to Mexico City to work with Mexican attorneys general on the trafficking issue, the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings by cartels. Um, she and I have talked about that, about the work that we can do together they just, on a number of issues, including, you know, she's a scientist. She is, yes. And so we actually also talked about the collaboration between the United States and Mexico around, again, investment in the future, investment in technology, investment in science. They just modified the constitution in Mexico, the judiciary system. And uh, Ambassador Ken Salazar even said this might be a danger to the Mexican democracy. Are you concerned about Mexico's democracy? I've not studied these changes, so I can't speak on them. Okay. Um, I have a couple of questions about your th these last days about sure. uh, before the election. Sure. Uh, how, what do you expect on election day? Uh, to get the results on the same night, maybe two days later, a week later? What are your expectations? Well, I hope to get the results that night, but um, that may or may not happen. I, and last time it took, it took more than obviously one night. What happens if you don't win? What would you do? I intend to win, and I will win. But, and I mean, there's a chance you might not, right? Well, it's of course, a, it's a, mm -hmm. an election, but, you, but let's be very clear. I support a free and fair election, mm -hmm. unlike Donald Trump, who still lies about his loss in 2020, who incited a violent mob to attack the United States Capitol and try and undo the will of the voters... A, 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 an attack on 100, 140 law enforcement officers that day were injured. Some were killed because of what Donald Trump did. And, and there are many of your viewers who understand and left a place where dictators would corrupt as the, the judicial and the democratic systems. Do you have a and when they this? look at, as they have mm -hmm. talked to me about, January 6th, for people who voted for Donald Trump maybe in 2016, January 6th of 2020, I mean 2021, was a bridge too far. In fact, yeah. I just did an event recently with leading Republicans who are supporting me, who supported Donald Trump in the past but have said, people who were closest with him, that he is a danger to America, that he is unfit to serve. His former chief of staff who worked with him in the White House former secretaries of defense, former national security advisor, and former vice president have all said Donald Trump, Trump is unfit yes. to be president of the United States and is a danger. And please, let's remember, most recently the reporting, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the highest among those who have served in our military, said Donald Trump is a fascist to the core. People who know him best who have worked to defend the security and the principles of the Constitution of the United States have called him unfit and a danger yes. to our country. I'm running out of time, but I wonder if you remember the other, like maybe four years ago, you, you were in Telemundo Center, and we did some questions that really had a lot of success on social media. Okay. It was quick <laughs> questions. You were really witty, really funny, so I wonder if we can do this. this sure, time. let's but give it a try. Give it a try. Okay, so... Short answers. What's, I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> What's the biggest misconception about you? Oh, I think that um, there are a lot of people who know me well and know that I have served as a, a prosecutor for most of my career, where I took on some of the most violent criminals, mm -hmm. where I served as the top law enforcement officer of California. And I protected consumers and veterans and students and homeowners. They know I served in the United States Senate and did work that was about focusing on issues like maternal mortality. And they know me well to know that I 
have lived a life of service that has been about uplifting the people. And as vice president, I've met with over 150 world leaders who respect my work and know what I have been able to do as vice president in the United States to uphold the role and the responsibility of leadership of our country yeah. as it relates to our relationship with our allies and our partners. Name three things in your night, night table. Three your night side table. <laughs> Well, let's see. What's on my night side? I've been staying at hotels for the last 11. <laughs> I've been literally on the road. I this know. is my first day home in almost a week and How a half. How many cities have you visited? In oh, this my goodness. I don't months? know. I've been repeatedly over and over again. Yeah. Sometimes they put, like, put up a sign. This is the... Um, you know, this is the place we'll be going next just to make sure that we're, everybody is oriented. But I've been all over. The, I'm, I listen... I'm leaving it all on the field, as they say. Yes. I have a very sincere sense of duty to earn the vote of all people, and I intend to be a president for all Americans. Very quickly, what would you like to be remembered for? That I lived a life of service on behalf of the people. Yeah. Yankees or Dodgers? <laughs> the Dodgers color says it all. Every day. <laughs> But actually, that's my husband's team, oh, and oh, so wow. I'm there with him. So that's, that's good. it's. He was very excited about this. I know it's yes. exciting. He's very exciting. They have a great team. That they did a great job the other night. We we watched the end of it. Will you be on the road or watching it from home? I definitely will be on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you Thank very you much, so Madam Vice President. It's good to see you. Again. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.